On today's Retro Tech Repair, we're going to be trying to fix this Xbox 360 that I bought spares or repair on eBay. Hello and welcome to Retro Tech Repair. I wanted to start today's video with a little bit of an introduction, because although I'm going to be attempting to repair an Xbox 360, this is in no way a how-to video. I know absolutely nothing about this console, and I will be experiencing it and attempting to repair it for the very, very first time. At the end of the video, repair or not, we'll take a look at how much this will cost me, and I should say it's much different to the number I'd originally predicted when I did my 30 kilograms unboxing video. I also wanted to give a massive shout out to one of my favourite YouTubers, my mate Vince. Without Vince, I wouldn't be here, and without Vince, a lot of you wouldn't be here either, and I really appreciate the support he's given to me and the channel. Anyway, let's get on with our repair. I hope you enjoy the video. Now, I'm not familiar with Xbox at all. I was a PlayStation person. I know nothing about these consoles. And what I didn't realise was it needs a special power supply, and quite a chunky thing it is too. That power supply I had to buy on eBay because it wasn't included in the job lot. I also got a cable for the video, although actually that's not such a big deal because I realise now there is a HDMI output. What I didn't realise though is that there are USB outputs on the front. So because of that, I bought a wireless controller as well. Now that wireless controller I don't think is the right thing to do because in actual fact the USB would probably be an easier thing to set up and diagnose and I probably have to pair this and I don't know whether that's going to work. I also bought a game because I have no games for the Xbox 360 so I bought Halo from eBay too. So I'm already quite a lot of money into this but it's not about the money. So let's see what happens now when I power this on. Error 74. So we need to try and fix that. From what I've read online, it's often associated with the chips on the main printed circuit assembly coming loose because they overheated. So I don't know how easy that's going to be, whether I can reflow those somehow or whether it's a different problem. But we are going to have to tear into this to find out. Uh, yeah, I don't really know where to start, to be honest, but well, well, that's not a bad start, is it? I've got that part off. And I must apologize for the background noise. Obviously we've got one of our uh, clips missing over the memory card slot there, which uh, isn't great, but never mind. I apologize for the background noise. It's really windy outside at the moment and I am sitting quite close to the front door because uh, I'm in the hallway of my apartment. Looks like there maybe was a security seal there at some point in the past. So clearly this has been open before, which again, I don't think is a particularly good sign. I'm thinking, we might need to get these end pieces off next, maybe. And it looks like those are kind of held on through here. So I'm guessing you push something in through here to get these off. We'll see what I've got. Oh, there it is. Yeah, uh, well, just looking not to break them. To only break one of those, I don't know whether that was already broken, but it's gone now. Now what's up next? Hmm, I wonder if these can now separate the two halves or whether I need to take this bottom piece off. Probably just goes in the same way, I don't really know. Aha, well, I need to get that first time. There we are. It's a plastic, seems to be a plastic tab. If you get it in the right place, you, you're home and dry. I just got lucky twice there. All right, same on the other side. Now I am sure there are, oh, it's just coming right out now. I'm sure there are plenty of guides online how to do this. So there we go. Please don't take my clumsy, uh, clumsy, clumsy attempts as any any instruction on how to do this. I have never had one of these apart before, and I've never owned one before. So this is not uh, not direction by any stretch of the imagination. But I'm feeling like these 
Surely must be next. They're already broken. Oops. And if they weren't broken before, they certainly are now. Just hold that one open a bit and then move over to the next one. There we go. And put some pressure on. And the third kind of wants to go back together. There we are. So I know that this is probably painful to watch and that if you know anything about Xbox 360 repairs, it's probably worse still. But if insufferable nonsense is your thing, then maybe you could consider hitting subscribe. At the time of recording, I've got about 2,500 subscribers and about 80% of my views come from non-subscribing viewers. So it really would make a huge difference to me and the channel if you could just click the like, subscribe and leave a comment. That would be just amazing. For now, let's return to our repair. No. Nope. That doesn't seem to be it. Hmm, got the front off. This back. Huh. So frustrating. So let's try a uh, custom tool in here. Well, it's not custom to the Xbox, but it's, you know, for the purposes of doing this kind of thing. No. Nope. Is that it? Yes. Yes, yes. So it's like there's a tab there. It's like there are two tabs at this end that you kind of push in. And you need to push on presumably this top surface here. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Anyway, we're in. Now we have the top enclosure to deal with. Boy. Now yeah, that comes off. It looks like the eject button just kind of comes off, or eject mechanism. There we go. What if this is screwed to the metal case? Huh? Maybe I have to go in this way. Looks like there are six of those, if I got them all. I'm assuming I, I got lucky with the longer ones there. Can I can I get into the top? No, nope. mm, maybe. Let's try and turn it over. It's promising. Mm. Somewhat promising. <laughs> All right, and we are in. And boy, is there some dirt in here? That's filthy. My goodness. And I guess I have more work to do to get to this motherboard. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get all this out of the way so that I can um, apply some heat to the motherboard, see if I can resolder. Because I understand from what I've read online that that is an issue with the Xbox 360 and the kind of problems that we've been seeing. All right, well, looks like this now lifts out fairly easily. That's nice. Okay. There we go. Now, of course, we don't know this is good because we haven't got as far as using it, but fortunately, unlike the other Xbox, they are available. Okay. Well, I couldn't tell you how I got it off, but I did. I wonder if I just tried kind of pushing down on some of these, whether I might get rid of that error. It's kind of worth a try. And uh, no, I didn't. All right, so it appears my camera wasn't running, but basically I just took the four screws out of each of the heat sinks here and the heat sinks just fell out underneath. So these four screws were each holding each of the heat sinks in. But what I have now is there were washers underneath. So those washers are now loose under our printed circuit assembly within the Xbox. So I need to get those out. Looks like maybe it's plugged in here, so maybe this needs to come off first. I'm assuming it's plugged in. Looks like maybe there might be a screw under there. There we are. All right, good. Uh, that looks like a Torx drive also, so let's get that. And then hopefully this will then come out. Yeah, there we are. 
and it's been a while since I voiced over anything, so here's a bit of chitty chatty to keep us going while I fast forward through me removing the printed circuit assembly. And there we have it. Here is our Xbox printed circuit assembly. So I don't know if you can see these marks on the board, but there's kind of marks that, well, they look like they've been left by something, but I don't know what that something would be. Uh, if you can catch that in the light, it's definitely some some kind of mark there. It's not dust, it's, it's more than dust. But it seems to be following a pattern, like something that's puddled in there or something like that. So we are just gonna give this a good clean down with some IPA, there's some more residue there as well. Ooh, that's squeaky. Okay, so here we have our Xbox printed circuit assembly. I've just got it sat upside down on the metal enclosure here. I took the heat sinks off and hopefully you caught that. I have unfortunately uh, had a couple of issues with my camera when I've been filming this. Uh, I cleaned the bottom off with IPA and now we are going to just apply a little bit of heat to here to see if we can maybe reflow any joints that might have come a little bit loose. What we don't want to do though is disturb any of the components on the underside of the board because I don't want those falling off. So I cleaned the remaining thermal compound off the CPU and GPU and now it's time to break out the heat gun. And to start off I'm just going to warm the board for a few minutes. And then having heated the general area and apply a little bit more intense heat to these two processors, be this microprocessor or a graphics processor. So this fast forward portion is running at about five times real speed, but when I played it back it seems that I spend a lot more time concentrating the heat on one chip rather than the other. I don't think that's actually the case, I think it's just the way that I recorded it and there's probably some footage I didn't record of me heating the other chip too. And now we're going to let it cool and we'll look at it again tomorrow. Okay, so a couple of days have actually passed and the weather at the moment is terrible. It's blowing a gale off the North Sea right outside my front door here, so I apologize if there's any background noise on the video. But what I need to do now is I need to get this printed circuit assembly from our Xbox 360 mounted back in the metal enclosure. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to position the screws in and I'm going to tape them in place. So I'm just going to hold each one individually in place with a little bit of tape. And I'm going to try not to overlap that because as I undo one, if I use one long piece of tape across, as I tighten up one, then I'm going to bring the other piece of tape with it. I don't want to do that. Okay, very good. So those hopefully now won't fall out. Now, there are an awful lot of washers in here, but I think, and I've come up with this myself just by measuring. I think we need three metal washers and one nylon washer on each screw. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Okay, now I've got those in place. I'm going to go ahead and put the printed circuit assembly back in. What I really want to do is come down straight on those screws if I can, because I don't want to push them out of, out of place. So I think that's all of them in. I'm just going to go around the other side now and check my tape and then I'm going to check the alignment of all the sockets around the board, make sure I've got everything in about the right place and I've got the right number of washers on there. Again, I don't know the correct number of washers, that's just the number that I think is appropriate because obviously when I took everything to pieces they all kind of slid out. And it looks to me like all the LEDs, sockets and everything else are in the right place now. The HDMI is very much central to that HDMI hole and so on. So I'm thinking I've got those in the right place. I've got the right number of washers on there. So I'm going to go ahead and reassemble this. Now, before I do that, I need to put a little bit of thermal paste, thermal compound on these processors to make sure that they are correctly um, thermally coupled, I think is the word, with the heat sink. And I have no real experience in this. I have some thermal paste. It's not that I particularly recommend this. It's just you got quite a lot for the money. And I think I'm just going to put just a tiny little blob in the middle of each one and hope that that's enough. I'm sure that's plenty. And we're going to apply the heat sink 
in the orientation so that the fan blows across the fins rather than blowing into the side of the fins. And now I'm just gently going to hold that in place while I try and do the screws up on the rear of the unit. I'm just going to gently tighten these up and I'm only going to do them just a couple of turns at a time or even less than that, just a little bit at a time. I don't know how tight these should be but I don't want to flex the printer circuit assembly. They're certainly not tight, they're just kind of snug. And whether that's right or not, again, I don't know, it's just what I have chosen to do. So that now seems to be in place, we're going to repeat the process on the other heatsink. Alright, so next is the fan. I don't want to run any of this without the heat sinks and the fan in place because I don't want to do any damage. I did clean off the fan just to make sure there wasn't too much dust in there. Just gave it a quick wipe over. There we go. And plugs it in down here. There's really a lot of, uh, a lot of tension in, in this. I really want to know whether I've fixed this or not, but I, I can't really find out. And then the fan shroud. Oh, no, one more thing. I need to put the little control panel on the front there. All right. Okay, moment of truth. Okay, so we've got it all hooked up to the TV. Let's power it on. Oh, that's not great. Oh, wrong button. Yes! Look at that! <laughs> hey, fantastic! Oh, that was brilliant! Oh, I'm so happy about that! Let's see if we can play a game. Ah. Yeah, it doesn't seem to want to open the disk drive. Let me show you that. If I press the eject button now, it says opening on the screen, but the, the disk tray doesn't come out. And then it says it's reading, but there's no disk in there to read. Okay, so I guess we need to take a look at this disk drive next. Oh, it is pretty grimy. You see all the, the dirt in there already. Uh, all the dust down the edges of the drive there also. So uh, definitely some potential to clean this up. There we are. All right, it's like there's a wheel here with a belt on it. I wonder if that belt may have perished or whether if I move it, I can kind of slide the drive out. Oh, oh, there we go. There, look, look at that. All right, there's no evidence of any grease on there. It's certainly a lot of dirt in there, which we're gonna get out in a minute. Oh, look at that. There we go. You see that? It is absolutely filthy in there. Let me get a cotton bud. So just one wipe across, all from one wipe of, of the mechanism here. So we'll go in here, we'll get this cleaned up as best we can. And uh, you can see the dirt in there. And then once we've got that cleaned up, we'll, we'll try again. Just need to be careful I don't damage that laser during that process. And that belt looks a bit dirty. I might try and just take that off and clean it with some IPA. And again, say, I don't know that's a good thing to do, but I'm gonna try. I think I probably would have had similar belts left over from some of the drives that I've used in, in other repairs and things, if I only I had thought to keep them, but of course I, I didn't. So I decided to clean the wheel of the drive's eject mechanism using a little IPA on a cotton bud. I was able to get all the way around the wheel by moving the drive tray backwards and forwards, which rotated the wheel several times so I could be sure that I cleaned all of its surface. I also decided I was going to try and clean the rubber belt since I didn't have a replacement, but for that I used window cleaner, my theory being that it was slightly less aggressive than the IPA would have been on the rubber belt. I suppose we'll find out how that went later in the video. 
So I also had the tricky decision as to whether or not to try to clean the laser. Some people will argue that in fact you should leave the laser well alone and others would argue that they benefit from being cleaned occasionally. Let's see which decision I made. So because this is so dusty and against my better judgment, I'm going to just clean the laser here. So I have a cotton bud uh, with a little bit of IPA on it. It's a brand new cotton bud. I'm making sure that's not dripping wet. And I'm just going to gently clean this laser. Everybody's probably screaming at the screen now. Don't do it. Don't do it. But unfortunately, it's now done. We'll hope for the best. <laughs> I really do hope I didn't mess anything up there. So let's try it. Excellent. And again, fantastic. So I did notice as I was repositioning the camera that in fact I have this shroud in the wrong place. So I've just reseated that. Uh, the disk drive now is in a better position and I put the eject button in. So let's try again. Excellent. So now we get the splash or the startup screen. The draw now opens and they have one game disk. It's Halo 3. And uh, close. It's reading the disk. It tells me it's reading the disk. Is it going to read the disk? We did clean the laser. Come on. Yes. Play game. And it shows us Halo 3. Fantastic. Here's our wireless controller. I need to pair that, I think. And I think that's this button. And here on the controller. Pair it on. And then pairing. Okay, well, let's stop flashing. Okay, good. And that's it. Awesome. So I think this is gonna work. Okay, so our Xbox 360 has been running for a couple of hours now and seems to be pretty stable. So we're gonna call that a success. As I say, I did have to move this shroud. I got it in the wrong place the first time around. I'm sure people were screaming at the screen as I was doing that, but uh, it's in place, the heat sinks. You know, this one's warm, this one's pretty hot. Uh, but it is all working as it should be. So we're going to go ahead and reassemble this and get it all cleaned up. First squad, you're my scouts. Move out, quiet as you can. So in just a moment, we'll take a look at how much this all cost me and what I eventually sold the console for on eBay. Okay, it needs a hard drive so you can save game progress. I get that. But for the money that I sold this console for with controller and with a game, it's just an incredible, incredible bargain. And when you look at other consoles for sale on eBay, other Xbox 360s, they really do offer tremendous value for money. The gameplay is engaging. The graphics maybe aren't going to make you go wow in 2021, but they're good and they're in-depth and they're plenty good enough to enjoy the gameplay. And that's, I think, the crucial thing. You could buy a console like this for not a lot of money, buy a lot of discs for it for not a lot of money, and have a great games collection that's going to keep you entertained for hours and hours and hours. Really, just a great console. I've never had an Xbox before, but I really am impressed with it. Okay, now, let's take a look at how much this all cost me. So the console itself was part of a job lot. Now, I've made money on the rest of the job lot, as you'll know if you've watched my other videos. So we're going to show the cost of the console itself as zero. But you can't play games on just the console. So, since they weren't included in the job lot, I had to buy a power supply at $9.99. A copy of Halo 3, which I paid £2.13 for. Thermal paste at 5 dollars although I did have a little bit left over. But then I paid a whopping $24.99 for the wireless controller and another £4.55 in eBay fees. Altogether, not including the price of purchasing the console in the first place, this brought my total spend to $47.65, or about $67 US dollars. I sold the console as a job lot with controller, game and power supply on eBay on auction and I got 27 UK pounds. So in total, even though I considered I got the console free, but in, in fact I didn't, it was still part of a job lot, I still had to pay it, even though I didn't count any cost for purchasing the console, I made a total loss of £20.65.
But it's not all about the money, the channel's about keeping things out of landfill and rediscovering retro items. And in doing that I've discovered what perhaps might be the best value for money console that you can buy in 2021. So I really hope you've enjoyed the video today, and until next time, I'd just like to thank you so much for watching Retro Tech Repair. And off we come with the lid.